It's now 17 minutes after the hour of 7 o'clock on this Tuesday morning on the Now Morning Show. I'm Kimberly D'Souza. Now on June 15, 1978, Lifeline TT began its listening service. And on June 15 this year, the organization celebrated its 44th anniversary. Now Lifeline befriends the despairing and the suicidal. It is a helpline which has offered this service for over four decades. Listeners are available 24 hours a day to offer emotional support to those passing through a crisis and imminent danger of taking their own lives. Lifeline will help save a soul, but they won't tell a soul. And with me to talk more about this is chairperson of Lifeline, Lucy Gabriel. Lucy, good morning. Thank you so much for joining good us morning. on now. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Of course. Now, you opened your doors in 1975. I was just wondering, you know, were there any other organizations at that point in time offering the service that you wanted to offer at that time? No, we're the, we were the only crazy ones who wanted to um, have a telephone service during the time when we had a moratorium on new phones. Other people were more, were, had, had better sense. Lucy, I'm just wondering how difficult uh, that, that actually must have been to start um, during something like that. It was difficult, but the 10 of us took on the challenge because we realized that it was badly needed. And it meant that actually we started talking about it in November 1976. And we eventually um, opened, started the listening service six o'clock in the evening to six o'clock in the morning in June 1978. We borrowed somebody's phone and we act it actually took us seven years to get a new phone, which is why we're really happy when other people say they can start a line and they got the phone in two weeks. We're absolutely in awe of that. Wow. Mm -hmm. And who, who were some of the, the 10 people uh, that you mentioned? Were they close friends or relatives of yours? No, um, it was actually, and I am not allowed to say who it was. Actually, it, there were two priests, one Catholic, one Anglican, one Anglican monk. There were six of us who were very strongly Christian and one who would have said he was definitely atheist stroke agnostic. And the, but we all had one thing in common, that was our concern that the, our great um, institution, the family that supports you through everything, if you have a problem with them, and that was breaking down, that we then needed an organization to do it, which was a revelation to us in, as we started to discuss it. And so we, um, we, we, we did that. We taught, we got a, we, visit, we got a visit from the founder of the Samaritans in June 1977. And he said, go with what you've got. He said, we've got no phone. He said, go with what you've got. So we did. And therefore, on June the 15th, 1978, we started the service. It meant we had no money, no problem. So that meant that we either sat on a chair or slept on the floor for up to 10 years to make sure that service was provided, it is needed. Now you say you were open from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. I mean, what were some no, of the from calls? 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. From 6, 6 a. in the evening to 6 in the morning, wow. because we recognize, and we've always done this, that those who are at highest risk of taking their own lives, they need help in the, in the evening when everybody else is asleep, nobody's around, they need help then. So we made sure six in the evening to six in the morning. And what were, I mean, how was the, how was the call flow back then? Were you getting a lot of calls during that period? It started off very slowly and then it built and people dropped into the center. They came in because again, there was a shortage of phones. So it was the clunky phone and there was no call forward in Nothing like that. So they, they, they call on the phone, yes, and people dropped in. They came into the centre and they sat and they talked for however long they needed to until they felt that they could carry on. Now, Lucy, even back then, were the only calls you were getting, were they only from people who were suicidal or would you also experience other types of calls as well? No, we've always had the whole range of calls. That's the point that 7.3% of our calls 
were from those in imminent danger of taking their lives, but it's a spectrum. So we had people who were just calling on, on, and they immediately put the phone down right, down right up, and it still is today, those who are in imminent danger of taking their own lives. And so we have dealt with the whole spectrum, all the issues we've dealt with that. And now it is that instead of it being 7.3% of our calls, it's 90% of our calls are from people in imminent danger of taking their own lives. And so how has the organization changed from then? So for example, I know now it's 24 hours, but how else has the organization changed? Like looking back, what are some of the things that you mm -hmm. notice? The, mid, the core of it has not changed. The people who, and this is what this is about, the people who are dedicated to giving this service do it, do it and demand complete anonymity for doing it. We remain as anonymous as possible. The, in essence, the major change really, you could say, has been in the last two to three years where people are very, very concerned about being able, about work, the impact on them of, of not only the, so much the pandemic, but the, the, the economic pressure, they don't have a job, they, they, they're really down to nothing. That has been the main, but you get the whole thing has always been that it's their family relationships. Even if they don't have a job, if their family structure is strong, the support from their family is strong, they seem to be able to make it. But when that is weak and you put on top of it, the really crushing effect of the pandemic, you have more, more, more cases of that. But it's the whole spectrum from children right through to people who are, and the number over 650 is increasing. It used to be that the majority of people, and it followed our statistics on suicide, were probably below 80, below 40, sorry, but the number above 50 is the fastest growing number. We have to look at that. Now, now when you say over 50, you mean in terms of age? Yes, age, yes, because our statistics said 15 to 29, and male were the majority of the people who were classified as having killed themselves. And then it be be becomes that, yes, it still is, but we hardly got calls from people over 50. That is increasing. We're going the opposite way to the international trend. They have now caught on to the fact that they're part of their population that it's highest risk is below 30. It has always been like that for us. But the highest, the, the, the rate, the group that is growing fastest is 50 and above. We have to look out for that. Now, following these phone calls, uh, Lucy, at, at any point in time, do you ever refer someone else maybe to get additional assistance um, after that initial conversation? Yes, if they need to. The thing is, it has got easier. It used to be that you, we've always had consultants, professionals who are consultants and the top people in the country, psychiatrists, etc. If we need to refer, we refer. We do it on two bases. One of them is it's completely confidential. We don't tell the consultant who the person is, but we ask for their guidance in, given what we've seen. And the other one is where you would know the person needs to see a psychiatrist and you could not mention it because they immediately put the phone down. Now people ring us up and say, I want counsel. And then we have to listen carefully and say, okay, you could do A, B, C, D, and the government has done a really good job in decentralizing those services. So people can go to the health clinics, they can go into, there's the 24 hour, um, mental health clinic in Mount Hope. There is St. Anne's. People are not as fond of going to St. Anne's, but you can mention it. It is easier, but we've always done that. We are listeners. We're not psychologists. We're not psychiatrists. There's a reason that it takes 10 years to, to um, train a psychiatrist. It, you can't just walk off the road and have a and, and, and do that. 
but we are listeners and we have 40 years experience of doing that backed by over 60 years since 1953 from the Samaritans. We adapted their system to suit us. Now, Lucy, for those who may be listening and they may want to join mm -hmm. um, Lifeline as a listener or somebody who can help somebody who has suicidal mm -hmm. thoughts, mm -hmm. is there a way that they can get in contact with the organization? Yes, you can. Just send an email to ttlifeline at gmail.com nice. and you'll get an immediate response within 24 hours. If you don't, we sent the email. The fact that we sent it does not mean you received it, but we would send it. We have a okay. dedicated um, volunteer, Moya, who deals with all our email requests. And at present, the service is 24 hours, but people can still come into the center to get assistance as well? It, at first, since the pandemic, no, it's mainly, and it has been always in the past, in the past 10, 15 years, people call more than anything else. And if they need to come in, then we very carefully deal with that. But they can. But it's a 24 hour service. It has been since April 2017, no matter what, throughout the pandemic, we made sure that that, that is. That was done, and with that is our commitment. And of course, uh, Lucy, is it safe to say that during the pandemic, the calls would have increased? Because I know you mentioned yes, that there was did. that 90%, but did it go over yes, that during the pandemic? No, the, 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 the risk, the suicide risk is 90%. Went from 7% to 90%, yeah. but the calls went up by as much as five times. Mm. So we mm. went from about six calls a day to up to 30 a day. And we find mm. it, it's more, it, it gives a better, a better understanding of what we do. It gives you information and not data. And so we would, um, and so we do it by the day. 2019, it was about six calls a day. It is now up to 30, it's 10 to 30 calls a day. Lucy, and now that you're celebrating your 44th anniversary, um, did you do anything to... Hello? Okay, I think we... Yeah. Unfortunately, we... Lucy, still there? Yes, yeah, somebody called. Yes, I'm still there. Somebody okay, great. Called. All right. So I was just asking mm -hmm. about the 44th anniversary that you just celebrated on June 15th. I mean, how did you um, celebrate reaching that milestone? I mean, against all odds. No, we, we did it the way we normally do those things. We, we made sure we manned the lines. <laughs> we just said out the the, 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 um, the but we we have no money etc cetera, etc cetera. so we really wanted to say to all the people who have supported us thank you very much and particularly to the listeners who want to remain as anonymous as possible no matter how much i beg i can't get them to get up in the morning and come and talk to you but i wanted it we wanted it said how much we appreciate the service they give the support, how much we appreciate Mrs. Hassan Ali for being our patron and supporting us for over 20 years, that it should be said. And Lucy, finally, before we close, can you just tell us where we can go to to get more information? And of course, those who are watching, where they can also go to donate as well? Yes, you can go to our website, which is lifelinett.com, or you can send us uh, on ttlifeline at gmail.com, send us an email and there's also our general service which is you can go to 800 5588 or 220 Lucy Gabriel, Chairperson of Lifeline TT, thank you so much for joining us and just sharing what the thank organization you. has been doing and of course good work thus far. Keep it up. Thank you very much. <laughs> Have and a good one. Thank you TTTT because Alison Hennessy and Judy Alcantara did what you're doing today for us, starting in November 1977. Thank oh, you wow. very much. That's good. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and that was Chairperson Lucy uh, Gabriel, um, who is from Lifeline.